Hello class, I always tell you that education, in order for it to become relevant, must respond to the changing demands of the society. The changes adapted by the educational system are manifested in what we call curriculum. Actually, class, I know that you are very familiar with curriculum as education majors. In fact, the definition of the curriculum class changes also from time to time. So from the definition which conveys that curriculum is a set of subjects, or a written document up to the definition which conveys that it is the total learning experiences of the child. No? So curriculum is everything that affects our learning. So it includes how we interact with our classmates and, and our teacher. It even includes our relationships with the various stakeholders of the education, our facilities, our pieces of equipment, our modules, how our teachers teach us, how our teachers evaluate and assess us. Everything, no, everything is included in the curriculum. And class, this is the focus of this course, no? We are going to study about the curriculum and its nature in general. But first and foremost, let's learn the various types of curricula. First one, we have the recommended curriculum. Recommended because it comes from various educational agencies. For basic education class, we have DepEd. For higher education, we have CHED. And for vocational education, we have TESDA. It means class that they are the ones who create or who devise the curriculum and then pass it down to small academic institutions like, for example, um, PSC. No, So, not only DepEd, Shed, and TESDA, but it is also possible, class, that it is also possible that a curriculum no, is um, created no, or is initiated by professional organizations or international bodies such as UNESCO. From the recommended curriculum, of course, it is put into words, hence the written curriculum. So, written curriculum includes documents, no? In a form of course study, syllabi, modules, books, or instructional guides, among others. Remember, class, that the simplest form of written curriculum is our lesson plan. And because of this, as future teachers, you need to know how to write effective and efficient lesson plan. So, hindi excuse class na mahirap gawin ng lesson plan because the lesson plan is our um, bread and butter. Uh, for your information then, class, the most recent curriculum, the, the most recent written curriculum is the K-12 for Philippine Basic Education. So, um, it was implemented um, last 2013. From what has been written or planned, the curriculum has to be implemented or taught, hence the taught curriculum. So the taught curriculum class will depend largely on the teaching style of the teacher and the learning style of the learner. So in other words, class, this is the actual application of the written curriculum. So after, for example, writing your pl lesson plan, you need to give justice to your lesson plan by delivering it in the classroom setting. For the learners to grasp maximum learning at the end of the day, the teacher also needs the help of the supported curriculum. So this includes class, the support materials that the teacher needs to make learning and teaching meaningful. So this includes our instructional materials, no? Like books, charts, posters, worksheets, or non-print materials like PowerPoint presentation, movies, slides, models, realias, mock-ups, and other electronic illustrations. Now, of course, class, this also includes video lectures or video um, records. More importantly, our facilities, our laboratories, your classroom, the glass board that we are using, the chairs, no, everything that we use 
no in our in our study class is part of the supported curriculum now in order for the teacher class to identify if the curriculum is successful or not it should be assessed and evaluated at the end of the day so in the process of teaching and at the end of every lesson or teaching episode an assessment is made that's why class no your teachers are always giving you quizzes assignments projects and of course summative examination so that we may able to identify if you really learn something because the planned curriculum class and the taught curriculum would be useless if you don't learn anything at all so this is the assessed curriculum we believe that if a student changed behavior then he or she has learn so ito yung learned curriculum class the positive outcome of teaching is an indicator of learning no these are measured by tools in assessment which can indicate the cognitive affective and psychomotor outcomes now if you have already tried to write a lesson plan class you can notice that the learning outcomes at the beginning of the of the lesson plan are expressed in observable behaviors why it's because class um the fact that it is observable we can easily identify if the student really has changed his or her behavior so that we may able to identify if there is learning at the end of the day no for instance if the student got higher score no higher than his previous score then that we can say that this actually an example of a change in behavior no kapag yung estudyante hindi na nalelate sa klase that is a change in behavior if the student can demonstrate basic uh, basic steps of cha cha for example that is a change in behavior and we can say that is considered as learning lastly we have hidden or implicit curriculum this is the type of curriculum class that is not deliberately planned therefore class it is not part of our lesson plan it is not part of the core syllabus it is not part of the curriculum guide or any written curriculum why it's because class it is the on the spot delivery of the teacher for example yung mga jokes ng mga teacher ninyo class so hindi yan plinano ng teacher ninyo hindi yan prenactis ng teacher ninyo at sinulat pa talaga sa lesson plan so parang it happens class in just an instant hindi niya plinano but he or she sees it um necessary in order to make learning process more um interesting okay however class as much as this is encouraged no but teachers should be aware no and should be conscious of the learning outcomes at all times ibig sabihin uh, kailangan class na although merong mga ini-inject si teacher na mga hindi part sa plan or hindi part sa um lesson plan kailangan pa rin na ma-achieve yung goals at the end of the day kasi may mga ibang teachers na ang ginagawa dahil um nandoon na sa momento na magkwento for example nawawala na yung um yung main goal talaga ng um lesson so nagche-change topic na nagda-divert na doon sa goal so we need to be careful on this class a teacher's role class is broader and inclusive of other functions and so a teacher is a curricularist so hindi tayo mga teachers lang. Napakalaki ng papel natin sa development ng curriculum. And in line with this, let's discuss the various roles of the teacher as far as the curriculum is concerned. No? The first one we have, the teacher knows the curriculum. Learning begins with knowing that is correct. Plus, remember, we cannot teach what we don't know and we cannot give what we do not have. So in order for us to be effective and efficient in teaching a particular subject, we need to know or to learn the subject matter itself. As much as possible, we need to be expert on it. Second, a teacher writes the curriculum. So 
writing here class does not only refer to mere writing. We need to know how to write efficiently and effectively. That's why class, if you have noticed, in times of pandemic class ngayon, your teachers are doing their best in writing or in coming up of modules. Bakit? Kasi of course, so that um, supported or guided yung mga learning ninyo. Okay? So, of course, class, kailangan din na yung module or yung mga materials, mga written materials na binibigay, it should be meaningful and at the same time, effective on your part. But, it can never be effective if you yourselves are not doing your task trend. Third, we have teacher plans the curriculum. So, we should be good in planning. We should be good in preempting the possible um, loopholes, for example, the possible challenges and the possible solutions to these um, challenges. No, So, we need to know also how to establish um, learning outcomes, um, identifying our goals. No, So, yeah, that is part of it. Next, initiates the curriculum. So, in case when the curriculum is recommended to the school from a particular educational agency for improvement of quality education, the teacher is obliged to implement. So, actually, class, remember, when the K-12 education was first implemented in PSE, no, all of us had our fair share of struggle. Kasi mahirap siya. Why? Because there are new subjects na ini-include dito. And because of that, um, nagsa-study din. Grabe, todo-todo yung study namin. Because we do not want na yung mangyayari is para tayong nangangapa sa loob ng classroom. No? So, as teachers, we need to be advanced. Aside from that, yung sa curriculum revision, mahirap din. No? Mahirap siya because there are also subjects na walang references. Yung binigay lang is yung course title lang, yung course description lang, walang syllabus, walang learning plan. So, wala kaming magagawa kundi mag-initiate talaga sa mga sari-sarili namin. So, we need to research. We did a lot of readings. And of course, we had invested not only our um, time but also our energy. But uh, at the end of the day, of course, um, all the efforts paid off. No? Next, the teacher innovates the curriculum. Creativity and innovation are hallmarks of an excellent teacher. So, class, we should always be after of um, uniqueness, no? Originality. We should not stick to what is common. In fact, ang sabi nga nila, being different is good, no? A curriculum is always dynamic. Hence, it keeps on changing. And remember also, class, our students are different from one another. So, you cannot um, say that one curriculum is effective to all. Kasi one curriculum is not effective to all. Curriculum should be differentiated. It should be context-based. And of course, before having the curriculum or before having it implemented, we need to have needs analysis first. We need to know the needs of our learners first as the um as the major beneficiary of the curriculum. Next, we have the teacher implements the curriculum. Okay, the curriculum that remains recommended or written will never serve its purpose. Somebody has to implement it, di ba? Kaya nga paminsan-minsan naiinis nga tayo na puro lang plano, puro plano, hindi naman nagkakatotoo. So, the same thing class is true in the case of the curriculum. So, kailangan ma-implement siya. Sino yung mag implement class? Of course, it's the teachers. No? And again, it will depend largely on the teaching style of the teachers and the learning styles of the students. Lastly, the teacher evaluates the curriculum. What is the purpose of evaluation? So that we may be able to know if the curriculum is effective or not. We may be able to point out the strengths and the weaknesses of the curriculum. If it has weaknesses, of course, there are weaknesses, then we should learn how to strengthen it how how should we turn it into um strengths no if kung meron naman siyang mga strengths class then kailangan mas pagbutihin pa natin so that the curriculum becomes better the curriculum becomes more efficient and and effective 
right? Okay, so that's all for lesson one. It's like what I told you, class, in our past discussion, how we perceive the curriculum change as the demands of the society also change. Now, our concept and meaning of the curriculum are shaped by our point of view and because we differ from one another, our point of view also differ. Now, as far as point of view is concerned, it can either be traditional or progressive and that is actually the focus of today's discussion. Let's get started with curriculum from traditional points of view. In your module, I actually put there some of the educators who forwarded or supported the said point of view. I am not going to focus class on each educator, but instead, I'm going to take traditional point of view in general. Now, in traditional point of view class, it is actually essentialist in nature, which means the focus of this point of view is the development or the acquisition of basic skills, knowledge, and values. So if you can still remember our discussion in teaching profession class, that is the very nature of essentialism as well. So there is an emphasis of the three R's, no? the reading, the writing, and the arithmetic. And of course, because of this, curriculum class is highly academic. No? So it is defined as a field of study and it is manifested in mostly written documents such as syllabus, the course of study, books, and references. No? So it is a set of subjects to be learned by the learners. On the other hand, curriculum from progressive points of view is the opposite of the traditional one. So, curriculum is perceived as the total learning experiences of the individual. So, I put in your module some educators who supported this point of view, such as John Dewey, Holden Castle, and Ken Campbell, Othaniel Smith, William Stanley, and Harlan Shore. We also have Colin Morris and George Willis. So, all of them have a similarity of perceiving curriculum as the total learning experiences. Everything that supports or influences the learning process is part of the curriculum. It means, class, that it is not only limited on the written documents. No, In fact, there is an emphasis on experiential learning, which means that if we want the students to master a particular idea or concepts. They need to apply it in an actual situation. Therefore, class, in a progressive point, uh, in a progressive point of view, students must do activities wherein they can apply the knowledge that they gained from the written documents. No, traditional and progressive combined. Curriculum is what is taught in school, a set of subjects, a content, a program of studies, a set of materials, a sequence of courses, a set of performance objectives, everything that goes within the school. No, In short, curriculum is the total learning experiences of the learner under the guidance of the teacher. So remember, the teacher is not the only source of information, but of course, Students also influences on the type of learning that is manifested inside the classroom.